Hey there, welcome back to the Epic Financial Strategies channel. My name is Alexa and today I'm here with my partner, Eddie Gartner. How you doing, Alexa? <laughs> I'm so happy to be with you today and we're going to really tackle the number one question that we get, which is how much money do I need to get started when it comes to infinite banking? Now we're gonna make it simple, so stay with us. <laughs> If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're first time here, I'm happy that you're here. Now, Eddie, how would you go about answering that question of how much money does someone need to get started with infinite banking? Yeah, so I think the first thing that people need to think about when they're opening a policy for infinite banking is what do they actually want that policy to do for them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a lot of the people that we'll talk to, they want to invest in real estate. So how much money do you need to get into the policy, which is the mindset you should be thinking about, um, in order to uh, attain your goals, right? So if, if my goal is I want to buy a house, is funding at $200 a month, is that enough to get me to where I want to be? Most likely not, right? But that doesn't mean somebody can't start a policy and grow with it, right? Because you can have many different life insurance policies. So. One, it's about how much you can really afford. And I think one of the things that we look at that for, for our clients is their cash flow and, and where are they putting their money. So, you know, I, I don't think that there's a minimum, as Rob always talks about, right? We don't deal in, in minimums with people. We don't not help somebody because they're on the lower end of the economic scale. Uh, so pretty much you can start with however much, but you need to think about what do you want this policy to do for you? I love that. Um, and I think and you, you kind of touched on it a little bit. It's the mindset behind it, though. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're going into it thinking I want to put the least amount that I possibly can, I mean, you could always get a tiny policy and sure. and pay into it forever and have minimal growth. But, you know, you mentioned a cash flow analysis. So yeah. we take our our clients and through that process on purpose, intentionally, yes. because, you know, in your experience, I'd, I'd like to you to speak a little bit on that when you actually take someone through and, and see cash flow in cash flow out, like what actually happens? Like, what do people see? Yeah, no. And it's a good point because you know people don't necessarily they hear it but they don't necessarily know what it is i think on, on a day-to-day -day basis we're programmed to do certain things right like our money comes in direct deposit most of our money is spent electronically so we're not keeping a ledger of where we're spending our monies um, our savings has become automated and so it's about aligning your goals and objectives with where you're putting your money so for instance if your goal is to purchase a piece of real estate is the best place to save your money the 401k likely not because you've now locked that money up for retirement um, you could also be overspending or over giving to the government right mm -hmm. those people that get a refund every tax season well maybe they've given too much to the government they definitely have they've given it's too much it's not a good sign if you get a refund check right so <laughs> news flash so if they look at simply you know changing their deductions that could be an increase of cash flow for them uh, and there's other things around it what it isn't is budget counseling mm -hmm. right we're not here to tell you or the the people how to spend their money it's their money and they they get to choose how they spend it it's about finding those places where money is not efficient or not lining up with their goals right so you know figuring out hey what is it that you want right and where your money's going now it, does it actually align with what you say you want yeah right now um i think i'd like to take a step back because whenever we sit down with someone sometimes it's hard to grasp the concept of infinite banking like what is that so yeah. when we're talking about the the banking concept what do people have to understand to get into the right mindset to start something like this yeah i think when it comes to infinite banking and understanding the concept it's about the utilization or the maximum utilization of your dollars mm -hmm. right so there's a couple schools of thought that people will come from so it, let's just put it in the context of buying a vehicle right or financing your your debt if you're purchasing a car what are your options most people will just go out and finance that vehicle right yeah. and so now they're paying x amount of dollars a month that's coming from their cash flow so they're not saving that money 
Um, but that's coming from their cash flow. They pay it. And at the end of paying for that car, yeah, now they own this car, but it's usually worth a whole lot less than what they originally purchased it for. Plus they gave away all this interest to finance the vehicle. Correct. So then you get people like Dave Ramsey and Dave Ramsey will say, well, you should buy everything cash. Like I remember him talking about buying homes cash. Mm -hmm. Like he's really big on you pay cash. Well, cash is great, except for the fact that once you've paid the cash, you now give up the right to earn any interest. On that money. On the money, because it's out of your world. So what the, what the infinite banking concept does for you is it allows you to store your money, right? Effe effectively and efficiently grow it, tax deferred, access it income tax free. And when you're leveraging those dollars, you're actually keeping a lot of that interest that you would pay to these financial institutions inside your world because you're continually compounding the money inside of the policy. Exactly. So, and, and I know one thing that people fail to realize is every time you spend your dollars, you're either paying interest to someone else yeah. to, to spend those dollars, or you're missing out on the opportunity to grow those dollars over time. So like you said, with the car is a perfect example. Yeah. If, you're, if you're paying, let's say $10,000, $20,000 cash, what does what is that actually worth over the the course of the next 10 20 years if it were compounding for yeah. you so it's actually a lot a lot less i mean a lot more that you're the money is yeah that you're losing out on i mean think about it what what's the compounding growth on twenty thousand dollars over your lifetime that's essentially you know that that one transaction imagine doing that for all your transactions yeah right and that that's what the concept is all about awesome now and for the people who are still wondering it you know what is the minimum i know we don't like to to say that but yeah. As far as funding, is there a rule of thumb that people can follow? So I, I hear a number of different things out there as far as what people will say is a rule of thumb. And I kind of sometimes I think it's a little silly. Here's what you want to think about. And this is part of the reason why we go into that cash flow analysis is what you should be trying to do is target a certain percentage of the cash you have coming in going to different vehicles, right? Um, one of those will be a wealth accumulation account that you can then put into a life insurance policy and use that for dedicated investing. The way you get there is looking at, well, can I save 5, 10, 15, 20%? Ultimate goal for a lot of people would be to get to at least 20%. You have people like Grant Cardone who, who advocate for saving 40%. And why? He advocates for 40% because you're probably giving 40% to the government. Mm. The challenge is for most people, well, if I give 40 to the government and I save 40, how do I live on 20, yes. right? And that's an income factor that, that you have to figure out. But trying to figure out how much can I save on a monthly basis and let's start from there. Yeah. And if I may, you know, for me, it's all about sustainability. Yeah. You know, so these plans oftentimes get a bad reputation because if you are not committed to the long term goal, it can it can hurt you. Right. right? If you're doing it for a month, three months, a, a less than a year, it, it actually doesn't benefit you the way it can in the long run. I mean, that's where people really win. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. If you, that's the most important thing is being able to stay committed no matter what happens. When the economy is bad, when, when the world starts to shift and things start to go crazy, are you freaking out, right? About, make, about those commitments you made to yourself, right? And you wanna be able to make sure that you stay with the commitments you made. 100%. We don't want our people to be insurance poor, right? That's the, right. that's something we do. So you're stressing about making your payments, but it should be something that's just routine, right? You're allocating this 10%, this 20, this five uh, towards your, your bank, right. essentially. So the point there, Alex, is you don't have to be perfect, right? You mm. just want to get started, yes. right? Because getting started, like any other journey you're going on that's going to lead to more good things right if you're on a health journey and you start doing some healthy habits well all of a sudden more and more start to, to come along that is so important because there's so many people that want to wait until they're in a in a position where they can then start when it's just the mindset yeah. right taking that first step opens up like you said so many opportunities other other things will naturally come up yeah right and you can always scale these things but the point is to just take that first step 
right? It'll become a habitual thing. Right, and, and because because what happens, and I know you've seen this before, is somebody starts one policy and all of a sudden it's another one and then another one, right? So there's not a limit to how many they can yes. have. That's why getting started is so important. Who cares if you start small? Everybody starts small, right? Yeah. But it's that habit of building that then compounds on the next and the next. And so, yeah, you can have really as many policies as you want, right? Within the that confines of your income. Yeah, right? so. 100%. On average, I think people over the course of their life have about seven policies, mm -hmm. right? You get them at different stages in life depending on where you are, whether yep. you got married, you had kids, you started to make more income, your net worth significantly increased, which is what we all hope for you. So, you know, it, it, it changes based on your, your life. A absolutely. And getting back to the mindset part of it, right? Infinite banking is a concept, right? It's not a product, although the product is important and doing the product the right way is how we help people in that strategy. But that concept of infinite banking is the idea of spending that money and using that money in the most efficient way possible, recapturing that interest back into your life where you would otherwise give it away. Yes. And so the earlier and sooner you start that, I mean, how many people in their later 60s do you talk to mm -hmm. that say, oh, I wish I knew about this sooner. Oh, I wish I started this sooner, yeah. right? The, the message to people out there is, doesn't matter how old you are, just take that first step. And the best time was yesterday, and the second best is now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, you know, I think for, for people that are looking to get more information out there on the infinite banking strategy, on their cash flow, on these different things, the easiest step is, you know, just go in the description box, right? Like fill, fill out the information. One of the team members here at Epic will reach out to them. Yes. Um, and they're going to take them through that process. There's no obligation to work with us. It's really just going to be them figuring out, like we talked about in the beginning, what are your actual goals and objectives? What are the things you're looking to do? And what have you been doing currently? And once we understand that, we can help you with the different products that will help you implement the infinite banking strategy. Well, Eddie, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. And, and listen, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment uh, if you want to learn more about something that we talked about specifically. And like Eddie said, click the link in the description. It is never too early to reach out to someone, get educated and see if this is something that makes sense for you. Thank you again so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.